What's up YouTube? I thought I'd give you a bit of an update today on uh, what I've been using my bit of a solar setup for. So as you may remember I've got these two. It's very messy at the moment. I've got breakers in because I was trying to see if one of these controllers could handle three panels but they can't. Anyhow, the breakers are just getting used as switches. I bought them for $2.20 each and a 63 amp AC house breakers. We've got a beautiful sunny day out here today. Plenty of uh, power coming in. So the power from this charge controller goes straight into these two um, semi-sealed deep cycles. The power from this one goes through decent size alligator clip leads, which are still actually getting warm. Down to this battery. This battery here is the one connected directly to the inverter. Then it's got this big truck battery connected to it. And then we've got the alligator leads connecting this one to there. What I want to do is build a box for these outside. And then what I'll do is I'll mount these two and those two together. And probably do away with the starting batteries. There's a truck or a dozer or whatever starting battery. And that's a four-wheel drive starting battery. I might just use that for, for my truck. It actually needs a bit of liquid in it. But uh, some new additions. I have put this little... voltmeter here right on the back of the inverter so I know what voltage the back of the inverter is getting regardless of what the leads are doing um, so that big dozer start battery is actually connected straight to the inverter um, as is the uh, two up the top there so we don't get any voltage drop well, less voltage drop so there's three sources of power straight to the inverter from each of the batteries um, so next question thousand watt inverter what have I been using it for um, there's a few things I've been using the power for one is I've been charging up and discharging this 500 watt hour um, power brick or points I think it might have been 600 watt hour anyhow it's a 3s 12 volt power brick and then I've been using lipo charger to bring cells back to life in the house while I'm playing with the 3D printer. Um, and then in turn I bring the Lyco charger back out here and charge this back up off the bank. So half a kilowatt every time kind of thing when it's flat. Uh, other things I've been doing, I've had the little laptop out here uh, looking at analytics and answering questions on uh, YouTube. It runs the big Milwaukee radio slash charger. It runs everything plugged into this one here. Uh, in just a day and a bit we've used 1.4 kilowatts out of the solar so it's quite I mean it's not making me money or anything but it's 1.4 kilowatts I don't have to buy out of the grid so this yellow one goes across the shed to this big desk which runs a big Milwaukee charger and my multi bay small Milwaukee charger so this one can pull up to about 350, 400 watts depending on the batteries that are on it. That one only pulls about 60. So normally what I do is if it's night or I'm running out of power or the voltage drop gets a bit more serious when I put this one on because it's pulling 400-ish watts. And I've got a few of these batteries laying around that are flat. I line these all up on here and it just has 60 odd watts and one after the other after the other until it's done. So it's not as big of a load and the fan doesn't run on the inverter so the inverter is nice and quiet as well. Um, behind here I've still got my big bank of batteries that we're going to have to do something with. Um, my, my thoughts are if I use a step up converter like this, if I use two of these, if I set one of these to um, about 16 and a half, 17 volts, I can charge two of the cells over there with this, off this setup out of the um, uh, power takeoff, which is the ones on the side which kick in when the batteries get full so it'll just divert the power to this send it over and charge those batteries and then use the second one of these to charge three batteries so one to charge two, one to charge three and charge the three to 25, 26 volts which would mean that that pack would always get topped up and I wouldn't be sitting here 
full of power and not being able to use it. Even with the same, how much load we're actually putting out. So we're using 266 watts at the moment to run the um, battery charges. Even with a 260 watt load, we're still holding 12.8 right at the back of the inverter, no issues. And uh, as soon as that load comes off, the voltage will jump straight back up again. So it's not really struggling at all. The other thing I do use my solar for, and there's the other boost control. Put them back together. The other thing I've been using the solar for is charging USB banks and ADN 650s. Um, I use them to charge my phone, my GoPro. Um, things like that, cameras, so they're quite useful um, for obvious reasons. Um, yeah, i could got to use them to uh, keep my Samsung S6 charged when I'm videoing or whatever with it because it just chews through power. Um, and yeah, it's just it's more free power. So I plug my phone into one of them for the night time instead of plugging it into the grid. It's just more power I don't have to pay for. Um, utilising uh, the power that comes in at a low voltage level and the USB banks at the same time as the high voltage level. I have uh, mounted my 10 bay charger up on the wall. I'm going to bring the discharger out here tonight hopefully and set that up. And uh, once I've got a bit of a processing station set up, I've just got to put some stuff away. Get this processing station set up again and we can uh, get back into processing cells. Because I haven't done that for a while. And uh, yeah, get some get some cells all boxed up, ready to go for uh, various projects. I've got to finish the e-bike battery. It's just sitting in one of them boxes over there. But uh, basically, it's end of August, so uh, summer's on its way here in Australia. I want to uh, be able to store as much of the uh, solar power that comes down out of my panels as I can. Um, so we may even build a really decent size one of these now and now I've got a 3d printer we might uh, just build some uh, build some holders similar to these so I don't even have to wait for them to come from Hong Kong might just be quicker to do it that way probably not cost effective but quicker um, yeah so that's what's been going on that's what I'm using all the power I'm generating for I've got three 250 watt panels on the roof as you may remember. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I've got a 40 watt panel down over there still. And what I want to do is put that in a toolbox outside the uh, window where my 3D printer and that is uh, on a PWM charge controller with the little 40 watt panel feeding it and um, just use it to run some LED work lights and stuff like that like these ones in the computer room where the 3D printer and that is, so it's nice bright light and uh, lit up so that I can see what I'm doing, watch what's going on with the printer and uh, yeah, once again I'm not going to use it all the time so uh, a 40 watt panel up on the roof will do the job for the time being and if not I might just run a power line over from uh, this pack and the big panels with, a bo with another boost converter and just send 16 volts over a bit of two and a half mil house cable or whatever. Anyhow, yeah, that's what's going on with the solar and uh, what I'm playing with. It's a good thing, runs a little laptop. The only thing I don't like is when you try and turn the laptop on you get like a frequency fight between the laptop switch mode power supply and uh, the other loads on the circuit and it does a bit of a tick 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 noise trying to fire it up. Uh, I'm not sure if I can suppress that with something. If you know that I can, let me know. But uh, this one always starts perfectly and charges straight away. So uh, that's quite often got a uh, battery in the back of it charging up and gets used as a radio out here for when I'm playing with stuff. I uh, want to spend some more time out here, finish tidying it up, and uh, got a heap of projects that we need to uh, get happening. Um, now that I'm all moved here. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, let me know. If you want to build your own power wall, Go over to DIYPowerWalls.com and uh, 
have a look there. Sign up for the sign up to the forum, and uh, chances are, if you've got a question, they can answer it. Uh, go and watch um, Peter Matthews' channel, HP Powerwall. Go and watch Average Joe's channel. Uh, they're all building power walls out of uh, 18650s and awesome inverters and. Joe's using UPSs and things like that, so yeah, go and watch some of their channels. Enjoy. Thanks for watching, guys.